Good afternoon. Uh, the Senate Committee on Natural Resources will now come to order. Welcome to those in Carson City, at home and online. Uh, will our secretary please proceed to call the roll? Senator Brooks, Senator Goikechia, Senator Hansen, Senator Scheibel, Chair Donate. And I am here. Uh, please mark uh, Senator Brooks and Senator Hansen excused for the record. Thank you. Members and presenters, please remember to mute your microphone when you're not speaking. Now that we are in the committee room, please mute any cell phones and other electronic devices as well. And for all individuals present in our committee room, please always keep your face covering on and maintain social distancing. As you know, the legislative building is closed to the public, but it is opening up gradually and with the necessary safety precautions. So it is a bit of a hybrid now with the virtual and in-person participation. As in previous sessions, all related committee information is available on the Nevada Electronic Legislative Information System, commonly referred to as NELIS, which is accessible from the legislature's website. There are four main ways that you can engage with our committee. You can either register to participate in a committee meeting through the NELIS system, submit written testimony, share your opinion via the legislature's opinion application, or view committee meetings online through NELIS. To testify on a bill, provide public comment during the 2021 legislative session, members of the public must first register for the meeting that you'd like to participate in. And similar to previous sessions, testimony and public comment may be limited due to time constraints. When you are on the phone line, pay attention to which bill is being considered on the meeting's agenda and follow the verbal prompts. And if you ever need any assistance with any of these processes, or if you'd like to receive an electronic notification of the minutes, please contact our committee manager at the committee email listed at the agenda. Today, the committee will be hearing four assembly bills. We have AB 89, AB 101, AB 102, and AGR 2. I'm going to take AB 101 first as Assemblyman Yeager will be presenting that bill and needs to be in the Assembly Committee on Revenue soon. Uh, so thank you all for your understanding. And at this time, I'll go ahead and open the hearing on AB 101. This measure revises provisions governing the administration of certain substances to animals by licensed veterinarians. Uh, we have Assemblyman Yeager here to present in person and he also has three other presenters in the room. We have Jacob Schein, uh, Jennifer Pedigo, and Stacey Hoskin. So, uh, let's go ahead and proceed with Assemblyman Yeager first, and then I'll lean to you on who will be the following speaker. So please proceed. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, uh, Chair Donate, Vice Chair Scheibel, members of the Senate Natural Resources Committee. My name is Steve Yeager. I represent Assembly District 9 in Southwest Las Vegas. It is my pleasure this afternoon to present Assembly Bill 101 to you. Uh, Chair, with your permission, I'd like to make some very brief introductory remarks and then hand it over to Jacob Schein, who is my virtual legislative intern from the University of Nevada, Reno. He's joining us on Zoom and is going to give a little bit more information about the use of CBD with pets. And I also have two experts on the Zoom with us, including Jennifer Pedigo, Executive Director of the State Nevada Board of Veterinary Medical Examiner, and Dr. Stacy Hosking, a veterinarian who is associated with the Veterinary Association. They are available to help answer questions if need be. Um, Assembly Bill 101 seeks to ensure that we are able to utilize all available options to care for our pets. CBD for pets is not necessarily a new idea or a new phenomenon, but it's one who as time have come for Nevada at least to put into our statutes. Just as human beings can take advantage of CBD, so should our pets be able to. Uh, with that, Chair, I would like to hand it over to Mr. Shine to talk a little bit more about the use of CBD with pets. Hello, this is Jacob Shine. I just wanna make sure you guys can hear me over the Zoom. Awesome, good afternoon. Chair Donate, Vice Chair Scheibel, and other members of the Senate Natural Resources Committee. My name is Jacob Stein. I'm a student from UNR, currently interning for Assemblyman Yeager. Thank you for the opportunity to present part of AB 101. AB 101 is important to clarify legal standards surrounding the administration of CBD to animals. Multiple studies have displayed CBD's medical benefit for animals. As animals get older, they can have joint pain or other pain issues. CBD can be used to relieve this pain without interfering with other medicines. CBD can also help with mobility issues, improving the animal's quality of life. With these medical benefits in mind, it is an important option for veterinarians to present to owners. In the current language, a veterinarian risks disciplinary action by discussing CBD as a medical option. AB 101 offers clarity on this, ensuring that veterinarians will not be punished for recommending CBD as a medical treatment. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over back to Assemblyman Yeager. 
Steve Yeager, for the record, Chair, I think that concludes the presentation of Assembly Bill 101, but again, we do have a couple of other experts on the Zoom, and we'd be happy to take any questions at this time. Thank you so much, committee members. Uh, any questions, Senator Gugaccio? Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Mr. Yeager, I, I just got one concern with the bill, and I don't believe there are any FDA guidelines as far as uh, administering hemp or CDB CBD or uh, feeding hemp to food animals. Uh, so I, I believe at this point, because there is no FDA guidelines, you couldn't feed or use, administer this. And I know you're very careful and said pets, but uh, food animals, cows, horses, uh, the way I read the bill, it would be legal to, to use it on them. And my, that's my question. I don't think there are any FDA guidelines. We can't feed it to cows. Uh, Steve Yeager, for the record, through you, Chair, to Senator Gochia. Uh, the intent of the bill is for pets, but um, I may hand it over to one of my experts on Zoom because I think they may be able to shed some uh, light on that question in a way that I can't. So if we could do that, uh, please, Chair, I'd appreciate it. I'm not sure who would like to answer. Looks like uh, Ms. Pettigo, perhaps. Yes, thank you, and thank you, Chair, through you, um, to Senator Goikachia. Uh, Jennifer Pettigo, for the record. Um, the bill would not supersede the federal uh, regulations, so you are correct. It would still be um, impermissible to, to uh, without explicit federal guidelines, to uh, administer non-approved uh, additives to any um, feed animal. So that that would that law would preside. Uh, now again, so you couldn't do it. Is that what you're saying? That's my understanding. No, you would. This doesn't supersede any of those. It's for treatment, uh, especially in the intention of the bill to be administered to companion animals. I think there was a brief discussion about what this would look like uh, for horses. I believe there's some general discussion out there, but not um, not for food animals. No, this would only be for companion animals or pets um, in that respect. All right, uh, thank you. And just so we got that on the record, and clearly I'm not even sure, sure it would go to horses, but uh, I can understand I've got bad joints too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, any other questions? Uh, just, just a quick question that I had, uh, Assemblyman. Uh, how common is this practice in other states, and do other states require any additional training to, for a veterinarians or anyone to administer CBD on pets? Steve Yeager, for the record, thank you for the question, Chair, and I'll, I will hand it over to my Zoom experts who have uh, developed this bill, and I think they can talk a little bit more about the training that's envisioned and perhaps what goes on in other states. So, uh, Ms. Pettigo or Ms. Hosking? Um, I can, uh, Jennifer Pettigo, for the record, I can address the, um, the training issue. There isn't, uh, a, to my knowledge, and I can um, look up uh, more specifics, I don't have that uh, offhand, um, but I don't believe it has been envisioned specifically in a lot of states. Um, and I, I believe it may be prohibited in California, but they've been look, they've been changing that. So I, I'm not sure I couldn't speak to that exactly, but I, I can um, find that information out. There is, and, and Dr. Hosking, I believe um, in our last uh, house uh, hearing, we did discuss the prevalence of uh, courses that um, any veterinarian would need to take if they were pursuing or, or looking into new information. It's part of their professional ongoing education um, for any new therapeutics or administration. So um, if perhaps Dr. Hosking could uh, address the, the prevalence and availability of those courses. Hi, Stacy Hosking for the record. And in terms of what is available for education, the AVMA has put out an entire conference in 2020 looking at just the use of cannabinoids, CBD, in pet animals. And there's also quite a bit of information ranging anywhere from early studies where we look at what is called pharmacokinetics, where we can actually measure the amount of specific metabolites within the animal's body. We look at what are called pharmacodynamics, which are the actual effects of the supplement on the animal's body. And we've also got some clinical trial data. So the, the information that we have available to us 
uh, that is out there in the literature ranges anywhere from these early fact-finding informational studies all the way up to current uses and some clinical trials. Great, thank you so much. Uh, I don't think we have any other questions. I think we're good to proceed uh, with testimony at this time. Uh, so next, we will go ahead and go to the phone lines to continue testimony. And as a reminder, we'll be limiting testifiers to two minutes each. Uh, testifiers are encouraged to summarize their positions. Uh, is there anyone in the room looking to testify in support of this bill? Please state your name for the record when you begin. Good afternoon, Chairman, Vice Chair. Uh, my name is Tony Yarbrough. Uh, I represent the Bonanza Kennel Club of Carson City and many of the um, private owners of animals and pets uh, in the state. And I will tell you that we are in full support of this bill. We believe that this bill is exactly what's been, uh, been missing in some of the treatment that our veterinarians have been reluctant to, uh, to address and we think that this is a good bill and we stand behind it. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else in the room? Looks like we're good. All right, BPS, is there anyone on the phone line wishing to provide uh, support testimony at this time? Thank you so much, Chair Donate. To testify in support on Assembly Bill 101, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no callers in support at this time. Thank you so much, BPS. Is there anyone in the room wishing to testify in opposition? Seeing none, BPS, is there anyone on the phone line wishing to testify in opposition to this bill? Thank you, Chair. To testify in opposition on Assembly Bill 101, please press star 9 now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no callers in opposition at this time. Thank you so much, BPS. And last but not least, is there anyone wishing in the room to testify in neutral on this bill? Seeing none, BPS, is there anyone on the phone lines wishing to testify in neutral? Thank you, Chair. To testify in neutral on Assembly Bill 101, please press star 9 now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no callers in so in neutral at this time. Thank you so much, BPS. Assemblyman Yeager, do you have any closing remarks? All right, I'll go ahead and close the hearing on AB 101. The committee will not be taking any action on this bill today, but I may bring it back for a future work session. So thank you again for visiting. All right, let's go ahead and keep this going. Uh, Assembly Bill 89 will be next on the list. I'll go ahead and open the hearing on AB 89. This measure revises provisions relating to wildlife we have Assemblywoman Titus and Kyle Davis, the Coalition of Nevada Wildlife, who will be presenting on AB 89 today in person. Uh, Dr. Titus, please proceed. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and, and uh, members of um, the Senate, the Natural Resources Committee. Um, Chair Donate and uh, members, I appreciate the opportunity to testify in front of you today. I'm Assemblywoman uh, Dr. Robin Titus, representing District 38 in Churchill County and part of Lyon County. It's my pleasure to present Assembly Bill 89, which authorizes the transfer of hunting tags under certain circumstances. As many of you know, um, my family and I hold tradition of hunting near and dear to our hearts. My parents taught me at an early age about the importance of hunting to maintain appropriate populations of wild game and consuming what we harvest. It is important to me to continue this tradition to share my uh, family's knowledge with others. Assembly Bill 89 addresses uh, two issues. First, um, some big game tags cannot be used because the person who drew the tag does not meet certain recreate conditions for lossful transfer. Second, it allows for increased opportunities to mentor um, hunters who are 16 years of age or younger or have a disability or life-threatening medical condition. Some of the returning members might recall AB 404 from last session which I introduced because a constituent had reached out to me to establish a program to mentor younger hunters within the same family 
Ultimately, the bill was amended to authorize the Board of Wildlife Commissioners of Nevada's Department of Wildlife to establish a program through regulation whereby a person who qualifies for extenuating circumstances such as an injury or illness or injury may transfer his or her tag to hunt a big game mammal to another individual, defer use of the tag to the next hunting season, or return the tag to Endow, Nevada Bar Department of Wildlife, for restorations of bonus points used by the person to obtain the, the tag. The bill from last session was a good start. However, Assembly Bill 89, um, mm -hmm. the measure you have before you today, authorized the Board of Wildlife Commissioners to establish a program that authorizes any person to transfer his or her big game tag to a qualified organization for use by a person who is 16 years of age or younger and who is otherwise eligible to hunt or has a disability or life-threatening medical condition. The bill author also authorizes, under certain conditions, a family member of a deceased big game hunter to transfer a big game tag. With the chair's permission, I would now like to um, have my co-presenter, Mr. Kyle Davis, representing the Coalition of Nevada's Wildlife, to continue the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. For the record, my name is Kyle Davis. Today, on behalf of the Coalition for Nevada's Wildlife, it's great to be here in person with the committee today. Um, my, the president of the Coalition for Nevada's Wildlife, Larry Johnson, had intended to be here today, got, but got hung up in the, uh, the various things that he needed to do to get into the building, so I'm going to try to uh, pinch hit for him today. So, first of all, I want to thank Dr. Titus for bringing the bill uh, to, to the legislature this session. This is a concept that we had explored in the past and got hung up last session, but uh, we think this is, this is the time to get this done. Uh, I represent the Coalition for Nevada's Wildlife, and there are a number of organizations that are a part of the coalition or that we work with. One example of this is Nevada Outdoorsmen in Wheelchairs, uh, an organization that takes people, you know, that takes uh, disabled individuals out for outdoor experiences. And that's just one of several organizations uh, throughout the uh, throughout the state that that do these types of programs. Uh, the Guides Association uh, operates a Wounded Warrior program. Uh, there's another similar program located in Winnemucca, and there's a few others as well. These individuals that are a part of these programs, you know, they often live their life in pain. They have diminished life expectancy. Uh, and a lot of times these experiences are some of the, uh, some of the best experiences uh, that these individuals have. Um, there's one example, um, a child that was able to take advantage of an antelope hunt uh, through the program offered by Nevada Outdoorsmen in Wheelchairs. Um, at his funeral, um, his father said, that that antelope hunt was the highlight of his entire life. And these are, these are, these are individuals, they, they, they just have an incredibly positive attitude, no matter, you know, obviously, uh, you know, a lot to deal with, but, you know, incredibly positive, and they walk away from this experience, you know, with just a life-changing experience. And it really, you know, you know, for those of us that, you know, like to consider ourselves tough out, you know, spending multiple days outside and, you know, heavy packs on our backs and everything like that, you know, really, really puts put in perspective how hard things are. In fact, a few weeks ago, um, Larry was able to uh, take a man with stage four liver, liver cancer on a, on a pheasant hunt. And um, this man probably won't live out the year, but just the look on his face to be able to go out and enjoy that, you know, for one last time was incredible. So Dr. Titus did a great job of really walking through the bill and what it does. Really what this does is it enables us to have the tags that are ava available to these organizations in order to, for these organizations to continue to carry out these programs. They're able to get uh, a small amount of tags right now through landowners or donations from various uh, companies that are able to come across these, but this certainly would make a few more available and would allow for a big game hunter that isn't able to utilize their tag to be able to provide an opportunity for one of these individuals to these programs. So we would urge the committee's support. I uh, want to thank um, you, Mr. Chairman, again for, for the hearing and Dr. Titus for sponsoring the bill. Thank you. And I'll do a little follow up if I might, Chair. For those who aren't hunters in Nevada, um, in order to go and hunt a big game, which would be considered sheep, deer, elk, antelope, um, there's a process that we go through, which we are currently in, anxiously awaiting whether or not we get a tag or not. Um, it usually opens up in, in March, and then the tags are drawn through a random computerized program uh, at the end of May. And then we find out whether we can get to go hunt one of these animals we may put in for. 
It's very competitive. There's a limited number. Last year they had about 350,000 applications for approximately 30,000 tags. They're very expensive if you do get one. Um, the tag process, I put in for four different tags this year, elk, antelope, sheep, deer. Uh, just putting in for the tags, it was $140 just for the application. If I get one of those tags and I'm successful, it's several hundred dollars for pretty much each tag that you may draw. So these are prized items when you do. And so if you can't hunt, um, again, as I'm listed, you could turn it back in. But this was a program that now allows folks to donate that to these programs, either for youth, special needs, handicapped, or uh, a family member. So uh, I would appreciate uh, support you support of this and happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you so much. Do we have any questions? Uh, let's start with Senator Gokichia. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I talked to the bill sponsor before we started, but I wanted to be sure to get it on the record because it said 16 years of age or younger. Uh, I want to make sure that there wasn't a misconception that it was, in fact, a youth tag and they could hunt any with any weapon any season, as you can typically with a youth tag, and uh, I'll let Ms. the Assemblywoman respond. Thank you, uh, Senator Gokachia, for the question, Mr. Chair, through you to Senator Gokachia. Um, thank you. We, we do need to put that on the record because this doesn't suddenly become a different tag than the, what, the one that you're giving, and that's the key note here. This doesn't suddenly become a youth tag. That is a different entity. You only transfer what the tag says. So you would be still hunting in the same area, the same season, the same animal that the original t uh, tag stood for. So it doesn't expand the tag program. It doesn't expand the area. For those who don't know, there's something called the governor's tag. There's a silver state tag that you can actually uh, bid and they go to nonprofits like the, the uh, Wild Sheep Show. These tags will go for $120,000 for one tag and that tag authorizes you to hunt the sheep throughout the state. Um, but this is not that. This is specific to the tag that you have that you then can give to another program. And just a quick follow-up, if I may, Mr. Chair. Uh, now, the process for a deceased member, again, that doesn't have to be donated then to an organization, but can be, in fact, to a family member. Exactly, and that was part of this whole program, and, I, and that was actually, Endow brought that to my attention when we put this program in last thing, so that this is an amended thing that you're seeing today, and that was actually the amendment was to allow it to actually, if, a fam if you, the family could decide to give it to another member if somebody actually passed away. Thank you, Assemblywoman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman, if, if I might just add on one piece of information on that, and that is, uh, that's an important point. I mean, first, uh, again, Kyle Davis for the record, um, and I'm sure I'm, I, I would guess that Indow's probably um, on the line somewhere to provide uh, some information as well, but that is an important point on the uh, on section four of the bill is that it was certainly the intent last session that that you that a deceased member of a family would be able to transfer that tag to another family member, but then when they got into the regulatory they, process, they found out that our language wasn't precise enough. So that's the goal of this session is to make it precise enough that that is clear. Thank you so much, sir. Any other questions on this bill, uh, Vice Chair Scheibel? Yes. Thank you so much for presenting the bill. Um, I, I, I like the concept a lot, and I just have a question about, uh, let's see. Well, I'm on the bottom of page two, around line 28, uh, regarding the organizations that um, encourage youth to, you know, enjoy a hunting experience, and we've limited it to uh, either organizations that serve youth with a disability or life-threatening medical condition, or organizations that... Um, serve youth with a household income not more than 150% of the federally designated poverty level. Um, and I'm guessing that that is reflective of the organizations that currently exist or operate in Nevada. I'm just wondering if you're aware of, I, I'm not, this is not my space as you guys know, but um, I can imagine um, an organization existing operating in Nevada that provides opportunities for kids who are 16 years or younger and girls or live in um, urban areas or are you know new to Nevada or something like that and I wonder if we would want those to be included or if you think they would be included under this language or if there's something else that um, I need to be educated on uh, th thank you uh, Simon Titus for um, 
for the record, and thank you, Senator, for the question. That was brought up before also, and that what we listed there was just a priority to make sure it would be one of those classes, but if there's another program, this language does not eliminate the other program. It would be up to the discretion of the, um, the Andal, and, and, and Mr. Davis, if you have anything else to add to that. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Kyle Davis again for the record. Um, yeah, uh, Dr. Titus is correct. It, it is a preference, but it, it, it is not exclusive. So if there is a program that doesn't fall into that, but you know, under the regu or, you know the, the commission felt it was a worthy program to make as a qualified organization, they would have the ability to do so. And I know that there are, um, there are existing programs, I can just give you a couple of examples that do try to get people outdoors. One of which is um, the Mason TRT's uh, youth camp in Northern Nevada that tries to uh, get youth out to learn about the outdoors and has a full curriculum on that. Uh, that is, you know, to some degree, um, you know, hunting and fishing related. And then there's another program. It's not necessarily, you know, specific to hunting and fishing, but they, they, this would give them the opportunity, uh, the after school all stars in Southern Nevada uh, that tries to get uh, underprivileged youth, especially uh, that have generally always had, you know, essentially an urban experience out into the outdoors and going out and seeing some of the some of our public lands. So they don't necessarily participate in these type of programs right now, but they would be able to under this bill if they decided they want to and they went to the commission and applied to be a qualified organization. Excellent. That is the answer I was hoping for and I appreciate you giving it to me. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Uh, seeing none, I think we're good to go to testimony. So as a reminder, we will be limiting all testifiers to two minutes each and testifiers are encouraged to summarize their positions and submit more comprehensive testimony in writing. BPS, is there anyone on the line wishing to provide or is there anyone in the room that would like to provide uh, testimony? Please proceed. And please state your name for the record before you begin. Chair and committee members, my name is Andrew Lee Pilbet, last name spelled L-E-P-E-I-L-B-E-T, and I represent the combat wounded veterans in our state of the Purple Heart and the nearly 70,000 disabled American veterans in our state. I'm also the current chair of the United Veterans Legislative Council, and we totally support AB 89 with so many disabled veterans in our state that and the difficulty of getting tagged, some of the programs that were discussed earlier, where there's organized groups now that are taking some of these vets out. I'm also on the governor's challenge team for suicide prevention, and the Veterans Administration has determined that these outside activities significantly drop the suicidal behavior of individuals, especially so many of our disabled veterans. So. Uh, we entirely support AB 89 for approval. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Good afternoon, Chair. For the record, my name is Tony Yarbrough. Uh, I, uh, I represent nearly 9,000 members of the Veterans of Four Wars in the Department of Nevada. I also represent close to over uh, half a million members of the United Veterans Legislative Council, which is an organization of all the veterans organizations throughout the state of Nevada. And as uh, your previous uh, testifier mentioned, that includes the disabled American veterans. This includes, obviously, all the veterans, all the military, the National Guard families, and of course, their advocates statewide. You know, it, every time we, we work on some por portion of legislation, there's always that hidden gotcha somewhere called unintended consequences. In this case, I agree very strongly uh, with the previous testimony that this has unintended benefits where it's very, very clear uh, that the VA has been throwing millions of dollars uh, at program after program after program trying its very, very best to be able to find a solution to those 20, 20 suicides a day. And it's very, very clear that outdoor activities is starting to make a difference. It was 22, it's dropping. And we expect to see it drop more as long as we continue these, these types of activities. So in that case, I will say ditto to the previous uh, comments and thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, sir. Anyone else? 
All right, BPS, is there anyone on the line wishing to provide uh, support testimony at this time? Thank you, Chair. To testify in support on Assembly Bill 89, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Caller with the last three digits, 155. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. For the record, my name is Christy Cabrera, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-C-A-B-R-E-R-A. -E I'm the Policy and Advocacy Director for the Nevada Conservation League. We are in support of AB 89 and appreciate Dr. Titus for bringing the bill forward. Nevada has incredible outdoor opportunities and organizations like the ones mentioned today offer experiences for Nevadans that may not otherwise be able to get out and participate. This bill will better enable these organizations to fulfill their missions and instill the values of wildlife conservation for more Nevadans. We urge the committee's support. Thank you for your time. Caller with the last three digits, 092. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Tiffany East, T-I-F-F-A-N-Y, E-A-S-T. Good afternoon, Chair Donate and Senators. For the record, my name is Tiffany East and I'm the Chairwoman of the Nevada Board of Wildlife Commissioners. The Board of Wildlife Commissioners supports AB 89. We'd like to thank the bill's sponsors, Assemblyman Watts and Assemblywoman Titus for bringing this bill forward. We supported a similar bill last session and as a result passed a tag transfer regulation for sportsmen with extenuating circumstances. And as you've heard today, Nevada's big game tags are coveted. Over the years, we've had several community advisory boards, sportsmen and NGOs seek support and or petition the commission to authorize a tag transfer to a person with a disability, veteran, or youth to introduce the sport to a new sportsman who has limitations and may not otherwise have the opportunity to enjoy and experience a hunt of this magnitude. We appreciate the acceptance of the friendly amendment, and we've also added families see that seek the commission's approval to tr transfer a tag after the death of a loved one. This is one of those bills that will offer memorable outdoor experiences, and we hope recruit new sportsmen and women into the conservation community. I appreciate the support of our veterans community and thank them for their service. We encourage you to support AB 89. Thank you. You have recently joined the call and would like to give testimony in support on Assembly Bill 89. Please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no more callers in support at this time. Thank you so much, BPS. Next, we will do testimony in opposition. Is there anyone in the room? Seeing none, uh, BPS, is there anyone on the phone lines wishing to provide testimony in opposition? Thank you, Chair. To testify in opposition on Assembly Bill 89, please press star 9 now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no callers in opposition at this time. Thank you so much, BPS. Last but not least, is there anyone wishing to testify in neutral on this, in the room? Seeing none, uh, BPS, is there anyone t willing to testify in neutral on the phone lines? Thank you, Chair. To testify in neutral on Assembly Bill 89, please press star 9 now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no callers in neutral at this time. Thank you so much. Assemblywoman Titus, do you have any closing remarks? Thank you, Chair, for the opportunity and thank you for hearing this bill. And I just want to comment that the, the pandemic has had a huge impact on people's desire to experience the outdoors. Um, I, you probably had a presentation from Nevada Department of Wildlife on the amount of people who have applied for tags, the amount of people are accessing our parks and being outside. And I think this bill would allow us to expand hunting access and potentially give more people the opportunity to enjoy the great hunting outdoor experiences that Nevada has to offer. I, th I thank you very much for hearing this bill. 
Thank you so much, and thank you for your time as well today. And uh, I will go ahead and close the hearing on AB 89. And again, the committee will not be taking any action today, but they may bring it back for a future work session. So thank you again to my committee members. Uh, let's keep going. We have Assembly Bill 102. I will go ahead and open the hearing on AB 102, which revises requirements for the issuance of certain annual permits for entering, camping, and boating in state parks and recreational areas. We have Assemblywoman Krasner here to present in person. So please proceed when you are ready. Thank you, Chairman Donate and members of the Senate Committee on Natural Resources. For the record, I am Assemblywoman Lisa Krasner representing State Assembly District 26. I am here today to present Assembly Bill 102, Disabled Veterans, for your consideration. We are working off of the first reprint version of Assembly Bill 102. AB 102 allows disabled veterans to enter Nevada State Parks and Recreation Areas for free for camping, hiking, and boating. They must only pay the administrative fee of $30 per year to receive the annual permit. Before going over the proposed changes in the bill, I would like to provide some short remarks on the background of the bill. As the committee knows, Nevada offers truly beautiful and unique state parks and recreation areas. There are so many amazing outdoor opportunities in stunning state parks like Sand Harbor at Lake Tahoe and Valley of Fire in Nevada's Mojave Desert. Through the years, we have seen an increase in visitation numbers to Nevada state parks and recreation areas. Understandably, more people are interested in getting outside, exercising, and enjoying the, beaut the beauty of our great state parks. In Nevada, we have a long history of serving our country, and in turn, Nevadans pride themselves on honoring the brave men and women who have served this great nation's armed forces and sacrificed so much to protect us. In the legislature, we often consider proposed legislation that honors our veterans and expresses our appreciation to them for their dedicated service. With AB 102, we extend our appreciation and gratitude to U.S. veterans who have a service-connected disability. Assembly Bill 102 will allow all disabled veterans who have been honorably discharged to experience our state parks and recreation areas so that they can find relief and enjoy the great outdoors. Currently, the Division of State Parks of the State Department of Conservation and Natural Resources offers annual permits for state parks and recreation areas to disabled veterans who have a service-connected disability of 10% or more. AB 102, this bill, proposes one minor change to current law in Section 1, Subsection 1, D2 of the bill, the requirement for any percent of a service-connected disability is removed. Thus, a disabled veteran who has been honorably discharged and has a service-connected disability in any amount qualifies for free entry to Nevada State Parks and Recreation Areas. This small change to statute would remove a cost barrier for disabled veterans wanting to enjoy our state parks and recreational areas. This bill was chosen as one of the top priority bills by the State of Nevada Department of Veterans Services. This concludes my presentation. Thank you, Chair Donate and Senate Natural, Recess, Natural Resources Committee members for the opportunity to present AB 102 to you today. Thank you so much, Assemblywoman Krasner. Uh, do you have any other presenters, or are we good to go to questions? We can go to questions. All right. Uh, committee members, any questions on this bill? Senator Gorgachia. Thank you. Now, even with this bill, do they still have to pay the administrative fee or pass? Yes, th they still have to pay. So normally the pass is $250 per year, but with this provision, if you are a disabled veteran who has been honorably discharged, you merely have to pay the $30 administrative fee for the annual pass that allows you to hike, boat, and camp in Nevada State Parks. All right, thank you. I wanted to make sure to get that on the record. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, I think we're good. All right. Thank you so much. Um, we will go ahead and proceed at this time to t testimony. Um,
before we go to the phone lines, just a reminder that we'll be limiting all testifiers to two minutes each. Um, we have a few people in the room, so please proceed. Good afternoon, Chairman and Committee. My name is Tony Yarbrough, and I represent nearly 9,000 members of the Veterans of Foreign Wars in the Department of Nevada. I also represent nearly half a million members of the United Veterans Legislative Council as one of their officers. Uh, the UVLC is an organization of all the veterans organizations throughout the state of Nevada. That includes all veterans, active duty military, National Guard families, and their advocates. And the reason that we are in support of this is because this is our third, our third attempt in this legislature to actually get this bill to this level. Uh, this has been a battle from uh, session to session trying to uh, get this to where it was uh, something that we could do anything. It's always our goal to find ways to reduce any potential of suicide. And this is a big plus because it gets people outdoors. It gets activities moving. It gets things in a proper manner so that people can enjoy all the wonderful natural resources that we have in our state. So with that, I will say thank you very much, and we support this bill completely. Thank you so much, sir. Chair and committee members, my name is Andrew LaPilbit, and I think you have the spelling already. <laughs> Uh, I represent the combat wounded veterans, about 5,800 in Nevada, of the Purple Heart, and the disabled American veterans of Nevada, which is between 65 and 70,000 veterans in our state, according to the uh, Veterans Benefits Organization. I also am the current chair of the United Veterans Legislative Council for our state, and Tony Yarborough previously told you how many members we have and families. Uh, the disabled American veterans are a key element here. A lot of our veterans aren't taking advantage of our parks and recreations and for their mental health I mean, this is an essential change that needs to be made. Some of our veteran, younger veterans coming back from multiple tours of duty are um, service-connected disability and less than 10 percent. Well, that means the VA has determined that whatever happened to them in the service, that it was service-connected. And so sometimes they don't reach that 10%. But in later life, as many of us older vets know, some things don't work the way they used to. And this is an opportunity for a lot of both our younger vets and our older vets to get out and take advantage of our uh, parks and recreations. The nation has already done that on our national parks. We just need to do it in our state as well. Thank you very much. Yes. Senator Brooks, do you have a question? Yeah, may I ask a question of, of the gentleman at the, at the presenting table? Go for it. Thank you. And this is for the, the VFW organization as well. Um, how will you be promoting this to your members to make sure that they're aware uh, the veterans in Nevada, that they're the disabled veterans in Nevada, that they're aware that this exists and that this this benefit is available. Okay, I can answer that from the United Veterans Legislative Council perspective. We actually have a communication we send out, um, and it generally goes to about 250 key people in the veterans communities. We will also be promoting it through the Nevada Department of Veterans Services, who we work with a lot, as you can imagine, with Director Miller and her staff. So that'll probably be posted, once this bill is approved, be posted on that website right away, in addition to our communications out to all of the various uh, veterans groups, the American Legion, the VFW, the Disabled American Veterans, Purple Heart, all of these. Did that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I think we're good, right? Thank you, sir. Um, all right, let's go ahead and go to the phone lines. So BPS, is there anyone wishing to testify at this time in support? Thank you, Chair. To testify in support on Assembly Bill 102, please press star 9 now to take your place in the queue. Caller with the last three digits, 105. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. 
Good evening, uh, Chairman and Committee. This is Lynn Chapman, L-Y-N-N-C-H-A-P-M-A-N. Um, I'm an American Legion Auxiliary member of 46 years and 10 times past president. Um, I would also like to put on the record that Nevada Families for Freedom also um, supports this bill. Nevada is a state that has many types of recreation available for its inhabitants and tourists alike. Any costs that are incurred should be kept reasonable so that families may enjoy what is available to them in our beautiful state. We believe that when a person serves their country and they end up with a disability because of that service connection, if they have been honorably discharged and they are a resident of the state of Nevada, the fee should be waived and a permit issued. These veterans have earned it. This would be the correct action for our state to take. So please support AB 102. Thank you. Once again, we are currently on support testimony on Assembly Bill 102. If you have joined the call and would like to testify in support, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no additional callers in support at this time. Thank you so much, BPS. Next, we'll go to opposition. Seeing no one in the room looking to testify in opposition, is there anyone on the phone lines? Thank you, Chair. To testify in opposition on Assembly Bill 102, please press star 9 now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no callers in opposition at this time. Thank you so much. Uh, and next, we'll go ahead and proceed uh, to neutral. Seeing no one in the room, is there anyone on the phone lines wishing to testify in neutral on this bill? Thank you so much, Chair. To testify in neutral on Assembly Bill 102, please press star 9 now to take your place in the queue. Caller with the last three digits, 997, please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Good afternoon, Chairman and committee members. I am Kat Miller, K-A-T-M-I-L-L-E-R, Director for the Nevada Department of Veterans Services, and I'd like to testify in neutral on AB 102. I have two points I would like to make for your consideration. First, during the 2020 Veterans Legislative Symposium, Nevada's Veterans Service Organizations placed as number six of 48 on their legislative priority list the recommendation that the state of Nevada should reduce or eliminate Nevada State Park fees for all veterans. And second, in March 2021, NDVS was asked to provide an estimated number of disabled veterans with less than a 10% VA disability evaluation who might benefit from AB 102. We submitted a query to the Veterans Benefit Administration under the Veterans, uh, U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, and on April 13th, 2021, we received data in response to our query. According to the VA, the actual number of service-connected disabled veterans who fall beneath the 10% threshold currently in statute and now would be added to the total of those eligible for this benefit is 2,230 veterans. So in conclusion, this bill would expand the current eligibility of 61,113 veterans by 2,230 veterans, or just over 3%, not all of whom will avail themselves of this benefit. And that completes my testimony. Thank you for the opportunity to address this committee. Caller with the last three digits, 833. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Good afternoon, Chair Donate and members of the committee. My name is Bob Mergel. Uh, last name is M-E-R-G-E-L-L. -L, and I serve as administrator of the Nevada Division of State Parks. The division is neutral on Assembly Bill 102. 
Division supports veterans with a uh, discount on day use fees for all veterans, as well as the Disabled Veterans Annual Permit. The Disabled Veterans Annual Permit has been well received by veterans who have taken advantage of it. State Park sold a little over 880 uh, Disabled Veterans Annual Permits in 2020. Uh, removing the 10% requirement will make the permit available to more disabled veterans and will allow them the opportunity to get out and visit their state parks. Uh, thank you for your time, and I would be happy to answer any questions that the committee might have. As a reminder, we are currently in neutral testimony on Assembly Bill 102. If you have recently joined the call and would like to testify in neutral, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no more callers in neutral at this time. Thank you so much, BPS. Assemblywoman Krasner, do you have any closing remarks? This concludes my presentation. Thank you, Chairman Donate and Senate Natural Resources Committee members for the opportunity to present AB 102 to you today. I would appreciate your support on AB 102. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Uh, Assemblywoman Krasner, and of course, to Mr. Yarborough and Mr. Mr. Lee Pulva um, for bringing this forward. I recognize the, the nexus between mental health and the outdoors, so I appreciate you taking your time to present this. All right, uh, we'll go ahead and close the hearing on AB 102. And again, the committee will not be taking any action today, but it may bring it back for a future work session. We've reached the last bill of today, uh, Assembly Joint Resolution 2. I'll go ahead and open the hearing on AJR 2. This measure recognizes that the health of forests, range lands, and soils are inextricably li linked to the quantity and quality of water uh, Vice Chair Scheibolt will be presenting this measure, followed by uh, Jaina Moan representing the Nature Conservancy. So please proceed when you are ready. Thank you so much, Chair Donate, and thank you to my colleagues on the Senate Natural Resources Committee. My name is Melanie Scheibel. I am the State Senator for District 9 in the southwest part of Las Vegas, and it is my pleasure to present Assembly Joint Resolution 2. This recognizes that forest health and water quality are inextricably linked. The resolution is also one of the measures proposed by the committee to conduct an interim study concerning wildfires. One amendment to the resolution was posted on Nellis and adopted on the other side and uh, because it was a friendly amendment. As you can tell, my comments are carrying over from the assembly side. Uh, with me today to present the resolution is Jane Amone with the Nature Conservancy. And with the chair's permission, I would like to first provide a brief background and summary of the resolution before I turn to her. During the 2019-2020 interim, the committee to conduct an interim study concerning wildfires heard testimony on the catastrophic impacts that wildfires can have on watersheds and the conservation science practices that might aid wildfire management. Healthy forests work as an organic filter to keep sediment and other contaminants out of water. They also operate as natural sponges by collecting precipitation. The ability of forests to aid in the filtration of water provides enormous benefits to the ecosystem and to the public health of our communities as it reduces the need for water treatment. The loss or degradation of forests negatively impacts water quality in watersheds and increases the risk of depleted groundwater levels. Assembly Joint Resolution 2 um, recognizes that forest health and water quality are inextricably linked and expresses support for the federal government, state agencies, and local governments to work with water purveyors and other stakeholders to identify watersheds that can be improved by better forest health measures. Uh, I would like to turn the presentation over now to my colleague, Jane Amone, and I thank you so much for the opportunity to present AGR 2 and hope that I will earn all of your support. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you for the introduction, Senator Scheibel. For the record, my name is Jane Amon, J-A-I-N-A-M-O-A-N, and I'm the External Affairs Director for the Nature Conservancy in Nevada. Thank you, Chair Donate and members of the Senate Natural Resources Committee for the opportunity to appear before you today. I have a brief presentation that I would like to share, and so I'm going to share my screen. I'm assuming that you all can see that okay. 
Uh, Assembly Joint Resolution 2 addresses an issue that we believe is highly important to Nevada and Nevadans. As this resolution acknowledges, the links between our forested and vegetated landscapes and water resources are inextricable. These lands form the watersheds that store and distribute the water we use for drinking, irrigating, and recreating. The waters flowing from the snow-capped mountain ranges from which our state takes its name are truly the lifeblood of the driest state in the Union, sustaining both people and nature. We came to this issue through our work in the Truckee River watershed, where for the past two decades, the Nature Conservancy in Nevada has promoted the health of the Truckee River, investing over $50 million in its restoration and protection. Most recently, that work has focused on restoration of the Headwaters Forest in collaboration with the Forest Service, the Truckee Meadows Water Authority, and others. This infographic is specific to the Truckee River watershed, but the links demonstrated here can be extrapolated to most of the watersheds across the state. Healthy forests maximize snow retention, meter snow melt, and water delivery, and naturally filter that water. These systems support fish and wildlife, provide the water that supports our homes, businesses, and agriculture, and provide the places we recreate. Across the state, these systems are important to our way of life and our economy. One spark in the wrong place on the wrong day can change all of that. When these landscapes are struck by unnaturally large and intense wildfires, the post-fire impacts can be devastating. Catastrophic wildfires like the picture on the left leave denuded landscapes like the one in the middle. Post-fire, a heavy precipitation or runoff event will result in sediment, ash, and debris to be readily transported into our waterways and water bodies, the impacts of which can continue for many years after the initial event. These pictures are from a, the northern part of the Rio Grande watershed in New Mexico, but this could, and it does happen here, and it happens all across the West. The Slinkard fire in 2017 uh, was, was started in 2017, and it burned 9,000 acres in the Sierra Nevada mountains in California, just across the border with Nevada. These pictures are from 2018. Uh, one year later after the fire, when rain fell on the Slinkard Fire water scar. Fortunately, the sledge didn't make it to Topaz Lake that you can see in the background of that bottom picture. Wildfire also threatens Nevada rangelands. I know that all on the committee are painfully aware of the Sugarloaf Fire near Elko, which burned 235,000 acres of both forest and rangelands. Last year, the USDA awarded a $250,000 grant to Nevada for post-fire rehabilitation. Their press release highlighted the impacts of the fire to water quality in the communities who rely on this water, quoting, the fire adversely impacted the drainage basins to the Wild Horse Reservoir, the Waihi River, and the North Fork of the Humboldt River. These are all major water sources for members of the Shoshone Paiute tribes of Duck Valley and the residents of Elko and Twin Falls counties. It's nice to see this funding come to Nevada, but the need for restoration and rehabilitation is much greater. And one reason for this resolution is that we hope it will help us secure more funding for enhancing soil and landscape health to ensure resiliency for water supplies. We believe that AJR2 is a step in the right direction towards protecting our state from unwanted impacts to our forests, rangelands, and water resources. We appreciate that it memorializes the important links between our forest, rangelands, and soil health, and the quantity and quality of our waters. We also appreciate that it encourages the cooperation and collaboration that is so important in tackling an issue that is much bigger than any one agency or organization. This resolution has already seen positive collaboration. The reprint before you today includes amendments from both the Nature Conservancy and Eureka County. The Conservancy greatly appreciates the additions from Eureka County, which added language about rangelands, soil health, and conservation districts. We hope this resolution will open the door to additional resources to restore and maintain soil and ecosystem health in the watersheds of our forests and rangelands. Again, we want to thank each of you for considering Assembly Joint Resolution 2, and we hope you will support it. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much for that presentation. Uh, committee members, any questions? Seeing none, let's go ahead and proceed with testimony. Um, so testimony will go ahead and continue. Uh, as a reminder, key, all testifiers should limit their statements to two minutes each. BPS, is there anyone on the line wishing to provide 
support testimony on AJR2. Thank you, Chair. To testify in support on Assembly Joint Resolution 2, please press star 9 now to take your place in the queue. Caller with the last three digits, 946, please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Hi, my name is Madeline Reese, M-A-D-E-L-Y-N-R-E-E-S-E. -E -E. Um, hi, uh, Chairman and members of the committee. Um, like I said, my name is Madeline Reese. I am speaking on behalf of Sierra Club and are more than 30,000 members and supporters statewide. I am calling in support of AGR2, which recognizes that forest health, water quality, and water quantity are inextricably linked. I was lucky enough to grow up near state forest when I was a kid, and I knew that I shouldn't take it for granted even then. When my family traveled to the nearest city to do errands, I noticed that the air quality was worse and the rain that collected on the ground was dotted with oil. On our drive back, you could see the creeks and streams become clearer as we got closer to home. But not everybody grows up with this privilege and knowledge. We need to reinforce it. This resolution recognizes what many of us already know, that healthy forests provide myriad benefits beyond clean and available water. They provide wildlife habitat to air purification and oxygen production, and of course, the ability to visit healthy forests supports Nevada's $12.6 billion recreation economy. We hope this resolution encourages and empowers relevant agencies, water purveyors, and other stakeholders to collaborate and coordinate on science-based, data-driven efforts to nurture healthy forests wherever possible. On behalf of water drinkers and forest lovers throughout the state, thank you for your time and your consideration. Caller with the last three digits, 155. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Caller with the last three digits, 155. You, you, please proceed with your testimony. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. For the record, my name is Christy Cabrera. C-H-R-I-S-T-I-C-A-B-R-E-R-A, -E -E, and I'm the Policy and Advocacy Director of the Nevada Conservation League here in support of AJR2. As the driest state in the nation, Nevadans place a high value on our water resources. Forests play a critical role in collecting, filtering, and storing water, which is directly tied to water quality. However, our forests are threatened by drought, heat, and wildfire, all of which are exacerbated by climate change. To understand and address the threats of climate change and wildfire on our forests and to our water resources, we need cooperation and coordination among land managers and water purveyors. This resolution is a step in the right direction to help protect our forests and our, and our precious water resources. We urge the committee support and thank you for your time. Caller with the last three digits, 010. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You have two minutes and may begin. Thank you and good afternoon. Jake Tibbetts, J-A-K-E-T-I-B-B-I-T-T-S. I'm the Eureka County Natural Resources Manager representing Eureka County. I'll also note for the record that while I'm not representing the Nevada Association of Conservation Districts, I am a member of that organization. I would like to point the committee members to their testimony and support that's on Nellis. Eureka County does support AJR2 as it reads, and we specifically appreciate its inclusivity of recognizing healthy forests, rangelands, and soils. We especially support AJR2's focus on collaboration with those needing to be at the table included, which is the private landowners, land users, local governments, and conservation districts. We appreciate identifying the, the need to establish voluntary programs to address these issues that, that have been discussed today. So we do support it and ask you to move it forward. Thank you. Chair, there are no other callers in support at this time. Thank you so much, BPS. Is there anyone on the line wishing to provide test testimony in opposition to AGR 2? Chair, the public line is open and working, and there are no other callers at this time. 
Thank you so much, BPS. And last but not least, is there anyone on the phone line wishing to provide testimony in neutral to AJR2? Thank you, Chair. The public line is open and working. However, there are no additional callers at this time. Thank you so much, BPS. Uh, Senator Scheibel, do you have any last minute remarks? Just to thank you all for your time. Thank you for that. All right, I'll go ahead and close the hearing on AGR2 and the committee will not be taking any action on this bill today, but it may bring it back for a future work session. So thank you. All right, uh, we are at the last part of the agenda today, uh, public comment. I'll go ahead and call for public comment. Please remember to limit your comments to two minutes each. BPS staff, is there anyone on the phone lines wishing to provide public comment? Thank you so much, Chair Donate. The public line is open and working. However, there are no callers at this time. Thank you so much, BPS. Uh, any comments from the members before we adjourn? Seeing none, it's always a lovely time to finish before 5 p.m. So our next meeting will be on Tuesday, May 4th at 3.30 p.m. And the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you.